So, uh, first thing I want to show you is how to connect this battery uh, to a laptop. So let's do that. Okay, right now the battery is completely turned off. The grow watt is turned off as well. And my laptop is turned on. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to download you'll want to download a, a, a software package called uh, PBMS Tools version 2.5 FN. I believe you can find that on the EFG battery website. If not, you can find it on, I'll have a link to it on my website as well. That's www.off-grid-basement.com. Okay, so after you get that software installed, that's pretty much straightforward. You're just installing it just like any other application on your Windows computer. Uh, I am not about to get into Apple or Mac because I really don't know much about them. So this is all gonna be Windows based. Okay, the next thing is uh, to actually get a physical cable connection to the laptop from the battery. What you need is this cable right here. Uh, and it is exactly like that other cable. It's a USB cable to DB9 and then DB9 to RJ11 plug. So it's exactly the same physical format, but the wiring is different. The pins are different. So if you want to communicate the EFG battery to your, to your computer, you need to get this cable. This cable is also on their website. Uh, and I will have a link to it in the description. So let's go ahead and turn this battery on and get it communicating with the laptop. Using this cable right here, all you need to do, connect this into your battery and connect this into the USB port of your computer and then turn your battery on. So we're gonna connect it right here at the RS-232 port. And this side, we're going to connect to the laptop. And you'll see this little red light right here that turns on. That means that there's power to the cable itself. If this is the first time you're doing this process, you'll notice that your laptop uh, installs some drivers. And that is pretty much the communication drivers for the USB to DB9 connection. So let that install first before you try to start up the software. Okay, let's go ahead and turn the battery on. Okay, and then after you get the cable connected to your computer and the battery, and the battery is turned on, go ahead and open up the PBMS software. All right, and when you open it up, it may look like this. Um, but don't worry, if you go down to the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the little, uh, the little scissors icon, and then you'll see, I believe that's the, the Chinese flag icon. Just go ahead and click on that, and you can select your, uh, you can select your language. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit English, and hit the blue button, I believe that's okay. And you'll quickly see that everything switches over to a language that you can read. Okay, now that you can actually read all the, uh, the buttons and the tabs and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and click on Try Connect because you can see that in the serial port up here, it's using COM port 5, pack 1. Your baud rate is 9600, which you want to make sure this is on 9600. Uh, it shouldn't be on anything different. And uh, I believe all you have to do is hit uh, Try Connect. It says Searching, Found. And then down here it says COM normal, and it will show that it's reading the battery. Uh, it's, it's pretty much cycling the reads of the battery while you're using it. And now here, you're, see, and now you're connected to your battery. You can see all the information that your BMS is reading from the battery pack. So uh, let's go over this software. In the pack information, you can see that the pack voltage is 52.86, uh, pack current, it's right now, I don't have anything connected to it, so it's showing zero, zero. Once I turn on the, um, the grow watt inverter, you'll see some numbers here. Uh, the SOC is state of charge, so it's at 47%. Uh, 
Uh, and so H is a state of health, and it's at 100%. Uh, remaining capacity, that's the milliamp hours. And then the full capacity is the full capacity of the battery uh, at milliamp hours. So my full capacity is actually 103. I was going to do a capacity test in this video, but I actually accidentally did a full capacity test already because what I did was I left my grow watt inverter on without having it plugged into a wall outlet or anything like that and it drained my battery down to zero. Uh, so I went ahead and plugged into the wall, the grow watt started back up and it charged it back up to 100% because at that point I didn't have any communication. That full cycle it did boost it back up to 103 amp hours. So you could say that was the capacity test because now you can see that the battery cycle is actually two. All right, uh, in the center section right here, you can see all the temperatures in Celsius. You can see uh, the four Celsius, the, you can see that the, the four uh, temperature sensors that are on the cells right here at the top. Uh, there's also the, uh, the temperature on the MOSFETs and then also the temperature like just in the environment of the case. Uh, down here, you can see the uh, millivolts of each cell. So you can read 1 through 16. And uh, at the top, you can see the max voltage. The, the cell with the max voltage is right here. It's cell number 8. And the cell with the minimum voltage is cell number 3. And then you can see the, the voltage difference between those cells, which is 3 millivolts. So that's really good. Uh, over here, you can see the system status. These will light up. Uh, when you are using th that part of the battery. So right now we have charging on and discharging on, um, but you will see these other lights will light up if you are charging or discharging. Uh, and then you have your alarm status, your protect status, and your fault status. This right here is a very good uh, top level view of what your battery is doing and how everything looks. Uh, I really like this cell voltage by cell, like how you can see the millivolts, because if there's something weird going on with your battery at any point, you can plug it into a computer, and you can quickly see if you have a cell that's, that's running high or a cell that's you know, dipping really low for some reason. Uh, and then the other thing that I think that you would benefit from is I believe the parameter settings. And these are all the parameter settings that the BMS is holding right now. So you can just click on read all, and it will fill in all the parameters that the battery is set to. I don't believe this battery is set to be able to change any of these values, but at least you can get a clear indication. Like for example, you will know uh, the over voltage alarm for each cell is at 3.6, the over voltage protection is 3.7. You can also see the, the pack protection uh, for over voltage. Then you can see the under voltage for, the, for, the, uh, for each cell and the under voltage for the whole pack. Uh, you can also see your alarms, your temperatures, uh, all of those over and under settings. So this page is really, it's a really good view of all the protections that this battery has. So let's go ahead and click back on real monitoring. And once you are done with uh, viewing this on your computer, all you have to do is close and then close the program. And that's it.